Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Healthcare. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we begin this program with a look at a very special way to help breast cancer survivors like Claire, who at 34 years old and a mother of two very young children was diagnosed with breast cancer. Here's Claire's story. Next time, okay. Go ahead, your turn. I was 34. Um, my older daughter was three, and um, my youngest was just about seven months. Okay, Marin's gonna go first. I found a lump, and um, they wanted to proceed with a biopsy right away, and then um, a couple days later I got a phone call and found out that, yep, I sure did, had breast cancers. You know, the message to her when I was diagnosed was that uh, mommy is sick, I have cancer, but the doctors are going to help me get better. I had a lot of great support from friends and family too. Um, they really rallied and that makes, made all the difference in the world. I'm still incredibly grateful. I think that it helped me to take this experience that I had and do something good with it. You know, I just, I want to provide support to let, you know, in general, these young moms know that it's going to be okay. Um, you know, this is, this is something that you can get through and um, I understand what you're worrying about and um, a lot of times what you're feeling through this process. I think we were matched well in that way so then we could kind of talk through like oh well how do you you know tell your kids when they're this age yeah, or how do you um, you know deal with when they ask you why you're sick she's just like my special <laughs> um, angel you know um, that just kind of knows what what happened what how you feel you know how it is to be you know like a working mom and going through a scare like that I get out of the Firefly Sisterhood that I didn't realize. I mean, I thought I was going to be giving back, but I'm getting so much as a survivor um, because I have the opportunity to process still my journey, and it's something that I didn't really know it, that I needed to do until it started to happen. Kind of a, a way for us all to heal and to take, you know, this negative experience and do something really good with that. Be a part of something really good. <laughs> All right. Bye, Mindy. Joining us is Chris Newcomer, with who started Firefly Sisterhood yep. about four years ago. Exactly. And already you've helped over almost nearly 500 yep. local women. That is amazing. Yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Um, we've really been actively doing our work, our matching work, um, in three and a half years. So it's not years, even four it, years. It's not even four years. So it's been fabulous to um, do that. So why start the program? You know, I was working with uh, YoPlay on this idea, and they realized the missing piece of breast cancer was peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. Um, social isolation really does decrease your ability to um, heal. And they said, let's try this. So gave some startup money, and um, I was hired. My sister-in-law had just had her double mastectomy and got to build this program as a community-based program. And as you can see, in four, almost in three and a half years, we've made a dent 
Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. to touch so many lives and so quickly. And uh, in the video, we heard a little bit about Claire's story and Mindy's and how mm -hmm. that's helped them. Maybe you can kind of take us like through the program. How does it work exactly? Well, it's free and open to anybody in the state of Minnesota. We're community-based, um, and you don't need a referral to get to us. Um, you might learn about it in your physician's office, through your friends, on social media, but. You go to our website and you hit a big button on the front that says get connected and we ask a couple simple questions like your phone number email and name and then we start the process of making the connection it usually takes an interview um, and then we go to our database so we have 180 women who are in our database and you call them guides 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 because for us like guides Claire. light the way um, and we're fireflies so guides light the way and then we go in and we match on age, stage, and life experience, which is when it becomes more powerful. Um, I'm the same age, I have young kids, and my I have stage two. You've got things that you can talk about that you really, your family doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, my sister had breast cancer too, and we were always very close, but I know what you're saying, you yeah. know, I couldn't, I had an experience what she was experiencing. Right. So. Right. And you couldn't answer those questions, what's it going to feel like when my drains are or how come after chemo I can't, if everything tastes terrible, what do I do? Or I, my family doesn't understand. And so having somebody to talk to really does help. And that really is helping in the healing process. It's more than just talking and mm -hmm. things that really helps physically right. and mentally, right? Ment physically, mentally, and I think most importantly it provides a sense of hope. I see someone who was where I am and now look where they are. And that hope is really, really powerful. Um, we know it from research, we know it from personal experience. It's not just a word. It's not it just a word, meaning. no. And then just quickly, why the Firefly Sisterhood title? Um, we needed um, something that represented who we are, and our creative team came up with the name Firefly Sisterhood um, and said, this is kind of what you are because we light the way, and when you're outside on a summer night, you see fireflies and they light the way. And so that's how it is. We say we're a sisterhood, but I will tell you, if a man with breast cancer called us, we would help him out. Um, we help everybody who calls us in any way we can. And they just, there's a number and a website? There's a number and a website. It's fireflysisterhood.org. Click Get Connected, um, and we'll respond actually within 24 hours. We have a rule that we respond to our request 24, within 24 hours. 365 days a year. Well, Chris, it really was a pleasure to have you with us, and thank you for starting the program and being involved with the program. It's awesome. It's been a fabulous journey. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And still ahead, a local doctor joins us to talk about navigating the confusing healthcare system. He has some great advice for you and your family. Stay with us. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize... You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. I love it. Cross-referencing travel sites and booking all your flights with those... Vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh, But now they're like... Yeah. Aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org.
And we welcome back Dr. Rob Anderson with Urgency Group. Glad to have you back with us. Pleasure to be back. So we're talking about navigating the confusing healthcare mm -hmm. system. People, they have an issue, a problem, a health scare. Where did they go? And why don't we start off like the flu's coming up, mm -hmm. cold, the cold and flu yeah. season. Maybe people get their flu shot. Yes. But what do you, I mean, when do you just wait it out at home? When do you go see the doctor? When do you go see the urgency room? You know, that's a really good question. It's one that we're faced with every day. You know, people get the common cold, and maybe they're even diagnosed with influenza, and they wonder if they're developing a secondary bacterial infection, such as pneumonia. That's a very important question How do to you ask. Know? Well, I mean, it's tough to tell. You know, people come in, we like to check the vital signs, we look at their heart rate, we look at their blood pressure. We have a special test that we can do, and we can look at people's oxygen number to determine where that is. And if that number is low and we listen to lungs and we hear something that might suggest pneumonia, we get an x-ray and based upon that, if it's in you know, one lobe or two lobes, we can do IV antibiotics at the urgency room. We can admit people to the hospital directly if you need to stay in the hospital for a few days. I always tell people, trust your gut. You know, if you think that something more is going on, please come in to be seen. You know, even if you go to a retail clinic or urgent care, or if you feel it's you know, super bad, like you might die, I mean, go to the emergency department, but we can take care of all that as well at the urgency room. If somebody thinks that they might have pneumonia or are getting worse, we can check that out. And are there symptoms for pneumonia that would be different than just the flu? I mean, obviously, you have yeah. the Yeah, that's a good question. Chest. So typically with the you know, influenza, you'll have some body aches, not feel very well, want to sleep. And it comes on suddenly, usually. It typically does. You know, high fevers, and you just feel like you've been hit by a bus. But then when you get a secondary bacterial infection like pneumonia, typically a cough gets worse. You maybe start bringing stuff up, and you're just so exhausted. You know, you feel short of breath. Those are times to come in and get that x-ray. And even if you're slowly getting to that point, if you have a concern for that, it, it's totally worth it to be evaluated to make sure that you aren't developing pneumonia. You know, it seemed like my dad, he, his would always go into bronchitis. Like mm -hmm. he must have been susceptible to it at some point or something. Yeah. And so. Yeah. He would always know. So um, some of the other common things that you might see that people go, okay, sh where should I go? Let's say I, I mentioned um, in my notes that my um, my nephew was mm -hmm. just cooking away and sliced part yeah. of the finger, and he did go to. He did get emergency care because yeah. the d the cut was deep enough. But yeah. like when you get a cut, like it's hard to know sometimes. Yeah. I mean, most cuts will bleed. Sometimes it can just be a superficial scrape on the skin. I mean, that type of bleeding stops pretty quickly. You look at it, and you know, it's not that bad. But sometimes a cut a cut can be deeper. And if it is deeper, we always worry if there's a tendon laceration. You know, so you can go to a local retail clinic. Um, you know, in one of the discount stores or a grocery you store, can. you can go there and they can take a look at it and tell you if it needs stitches or not. And they might send you to an urgent care and then they can take a look at it they can assess you know for a tendon injury and if there's a tendon injury or something or if it's a complicated laceration then they'll send you to an emergency department um, or at the beginning you could just go to the urgency room and we're emergency physicians that work there mm -hmm. so we can determine if you are going to need follow-up with the orthopedic doctor if there's a tendon injury if it's a complicated laceration I had somebody just the other day they came in and they had a significant laceration to their leg and you could actually see the bone and we're wondering oh if gosh. there is a, a broken bone associated with it so we got to x-ray there is nothing broken and we could see a little bit of the tendon was cut so we put some stitches in that and we we're able to close up the skin put them on some antibiotics a splint to have them follow up with the orthopedic doctor and the antibiotics are so important because infection is a, a mm -hmm. huge risk when you have an open wound right? with significant lacerations yeah. like that most lacerations you actually don't need antibiotics but with significant ones or dirty laceration you know the plumber reaching the toilet to fix something and that one's going to need some antibiotics yeah for sure what about uh, um, back problems are very common what mm -hmm. if you're just laying in your bed and all of a sudden your back is just killing yeah. you. What do you do? Yeah, I think if you ask most Americans, at some point in their life, they've had some back yeah. pain. We've all been there. Not what I haven't. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you're doing yeah. great then. You know, if you wake up in the middle of the night with back pain, I'm worried. I had somebody the other day, they came in. We opened at 8 a.m. in Vadnais, Woodbury, and Egan, and they came in at 8 a.m. right when we opened because they woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning with back pain. Oh, no. And they were so uncomfortable. They're nauseated. They're throwing up. And I said, I they have a kidney stone. And they'd never had one before. So sure enough, we checked the urine, there's blood, and we were able to do a CAT scan there and found out the size of the stone to determine the appropriate course of treatment, got their pain under control, and got them feeling a lot it's better. It's funny, I wouldn't have even thought of a kidney stone. Yeah. And obviously, I'll be yeah. patients don't either. Yeah, right? yep. So what would be some other things that they should um, seek emergency care about? And, and don't hesitate. 
You know, sure. if you need care, you need to get in. Yeah, bottom line, if, if you feel like, you know, something's significantly wrong, if you're having a massive heart attack or a stroke, all of a sudden you can't move half your body, I mean, you should be calling 911. Right. You should be going to the don't, emergency don't department. Don't try to drive yourself or have no, someone drive. No, yeah, yeah, certainly not. But, you know, if you're kind of wondering if you're scared about something, if you're developing a new symptom, then certainly, you know, we'd be happy to evaluate you at the urgency room. We can take care of the simple cuts of broken bones, a, a bones broken like this or dislocated. We can give you some numbing medicine or even put you to sleep for a little bit to put the bone back in place. Um, people with headaches for meningitis, we can do spinal taps. Um, we can do all sorts of things. We're emergency medicine physicians that work at the urgency room. Again, we're in Vadness, Egan, and Woodbury, and we're open from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. every single day of the year, including well, holidays. Anderson, always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank Great you. advice as always. Thank you, Jody. Yes, I always like these house calls. Yes. So, and still ahead, eight weeks to wellness. We'll explain when we come back. Stay with us. Thank Thanks you. Again. Yeah, my pleasure. Probably sober. Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Hmm. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watch out. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? But now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. And joining us now is Dr. Justin Nye, a local chiropractor. Chiropractor, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. So you have a program called Eight Weeks to Wellness. What's that all about? And how can you do something in eight weeks? <laughs> So it's, it's, it's an eight weeks to start of a journey, right? Most people can see a light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to eight weeks. If I told you it's gonna be a year program, you'd look at me and go, wow, a year is a big commitment. Yeah. Eight weeks is easy, right? People can think of two months, I can do almost anything for two months and see a result. And is it enough to make a lifestyle behavioral change that it can is. result it is. in a healthier lifestyle? It is, it's, it's a lifestyle modification program where chiropractic is at the core of it. You know, we look at people's uh, blood work, we do this thing called a wellness score, um, which looks at many different parameters of health, and in eight weeks we see most people's score improve 20 points over that short term of eight weeks. What would be some of those things in that score that you're looking at? Uh, we do uh, blood work, so we do a complete blood panel with cholesterol and blood sugar in it. Um, we also do core strength and core flexibility. We look at the nervous system, BMI, which most people understand, body fat percentage, and we see all of those change in a short period of time just by changing someone's lifestyle. And why is that core strain so important to being well? Well, 60% of the population today sits all day long, so we find that as our core and as our, our body body's ability to stay mobile decreases because we sit so much. I, I describe it like this, if we went to the mall, you know, based on how people move, we could generally tell how healthy they are or they're not. Oh my gosh. And that's core strength and core flexibility is what it leads into. And so the general piece is, is if we move more, we're usually healthier. And what would be some of those things that you can test that strength? So we do things like squat, overhead squat, really simple. We do things like straight leg raises. We do things where we have people you know, lay on their back and lift their feet six inches off the ground to see if their core can hold it. Really simple things that we find most people lose because they sit all day long. 
And things like um, yoga might help some of that? Yoga helps with that. We do that every Saturday in our office, so I love yoga. Um, just mobility. We teach patients how to do exercises that keep them mobile and keep them moving that they can do every single day as part of their regular regimen. What would be something that our viewers could just take away from the, the interview right now that they can do at home while, while they're watching this interview? Really simple things like just starting to, to work on your core. So, you know, on any Google, you can look up a core exercise. There's 30 day challenges, and just start working on your core. Core. simple sit-ups, planks, just really easy things to start to develop that core and their balance and that's where I would start for sure. And you were telling us before we started too that you're seeing a lot of um, younger people with neck problems from texting. That's right, all day long. That we have a lot of young kids now, and everybody has a cell phone, and so a lot of people you have. Don't even we think call. about that. You yeah. don't. No, like it's that anterior head carriage we call it, and so for every inch the head shifts forward, it adds 10 pounds of stress on your spine. So if you think of a kid who texts for the next 30 years, you know their head's going to be way out here. Oh my gosh. And it's much harder to breathe and do things that way. So if someone's interested in getting, um, taking the eight weeks to wellness program, how do they go about doing that? Um, go ahead and go to our website, uh, www.woodburyspine.com. Um, they can give us a call and what we always start doing is we always do the wellness score to see where they're at with their health. We set goals specific to them and then we see where their journey needs to go. And it's important to take care of your spine. It is very important to take care of your spine. That's your backbone, right? It's your backbone. It's the only <laughs> organ in the human body that has a structure around it, that God gave us a structure around it called the spine to house and protect it. So it must be pretty important if we have that, right? Well, Dr. Nye, thank you for being with us. Thanks for Appreciate having me. It. And still ahead, we join Chef Angelo in the kitchen, so stay with us. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. That special calling that compels us, when others are down, to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to OneAmericaAppeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. We're now joined by Chef Angelo from Solomia Restaurant. Hi, Judy. How are you doing? Buongiorno. Buongiorno to you. Buongiorno. And um, you are, we have a fundraiser that you're going to be cooking up for with about several other top chefs from around the Twin Cities. And it's called Chef Fest. And um, in there, then, it's all for a good cause to help people in the community and stuff like that. So what are you going to be cooking up for us today? Yes, uh, let's go first to see uh, what we present today. We try to teach the people something uh, maybe they didn't do yet, but one of the important things is uh, give the people the idea when you cook. Long you have a little bit of uh, passion to do some good food, just follow the steps and, uh, of course, <laughs> check the recipes right, okay? Yeah. Today we will do crepe raviolis. Mm. Oh, love it. I do too. It's uh, crepe raviolis in Grand Marnier light cream sauce. Mm. Very mm. fattening though. No, it's very thin, right? Oh, very, no, well, yeah. it, it's pretty good. You know, I mean, uh, not, not crazy. It's still, I think, a part of the healthy food. Uh -huh. Okay. So, what do you got? Uh, 
Okay, and it's what I did, it's a sample. I sip my glass of wine this morning already <laughs> because you want to relax. And uh, I prep all the ingredients. In the same time, I put the ingredients uh, in the way you do one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. all right? And the way you got to put it in the pan. Here I got uh, peppers. It's a yellow, green, and yellow paper. Beautiful uh, looking peppers. Yeah, a little garlic. I go here, the fine pan's really hot. Be careful because we can have a little smoke now. All right. Uh huh. So that was just water so, that you added, right? Yes. Yeah, but I just added it to the Grand Marnier. This will give it. Oh, a, okay. Will give it the orange flavor. I prepare a little lobster stock. I put it together here. Now you can see the things that Well, the whole studio flavor. smells so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And in the hand we have the. Um, the parm sauce. You know, this is very recipe, very easy recipe to do when the thing is everything ready, of course. Our ravioli, it's already in the water. It's over there. And, uh, you know, we just waiting now for the, the so sauce. So you just kind of simmer this then? Yeah, the sauce go. And the sauce you, you can make ahead of time then, right? Yeah, absolutely. As well as your filling and your um, the pasta, the noodles and yeah. stuff. Yeah. The, the ravioli you prep in advance, you can buy ravioli anywhere. Uh, it's a lot of great race and a great company yeah. out there. I think I mentioned I won a cooking contest once using my family at, at, um, the ravioli recipe. I'm not a cook, <laughs> but wow. it was the recipe that won. But um, I won, but then I went to the a state competition in the state because it took too long to make the, the filling, the, the, you know, the raviolis, pillows, and then the sauce, they said it. Too, takes too long for a modern housewife or a cook. Well, I hear you have Italian blood, right? Yeah, I'm two-thirds Italian, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> That's why you're a good cook. Yeah. You know, when we're talking about cuisine and uh, make a great food, uh, Italians is very, you know, very competitive about that. We just want to win. But, you know, why we don't talk a little bit about why we're here? Right. All right. Uh, I already present myself. I'm Chef Angelo. I'm the executive chef of owner of Soli Mio Ristorante in Woodbury. But I'm here today for represent American Culinary Federation and Woodbury Community Foundation. The partnership is putting on the chef fest. Oh, yeah. God. It's for me, you know, as an Italian immigrant, uh, can do this for my community. It makes me very emotional, very uh, I'm, I'm, I feel great, okay? Well, we do this Chef Fest for three years, and in the last three years, we were very successful. This is the third year. And it's we at Envision Event Center, formerly called Prom Center Prom in Center. Oakdale. Yeah. What, what we did, we come with the idea to uh, put a lot of chefs together, all top chefs, of course, and, uh, and, and do stations, all kinds of stations, Italian, salad, um, carving, a regional from uh, Chef Shield from Lake Elmo, and uh, we have the corporate chef from U.S. Food in the United States, big chef, yeah. big star. He do the Irish part. Again, we have so many beautiful dessert from Chef Gary. Mama to die mia. For. Yeah, absolutely. Mama yes. mia. Well, you coming in, the ticket's about $60. You not even pay the food, really. The atmosphere, you see all chefs around, is just unbelievable. I'm so happy to be part of this. And some of the money goes for scholarships then, right? Yes, the yeah. partnership with ACF, some of the money go to the American Culinary Federation, but nobody can touch the money. This is go just for help students for scholarship. And again, this event, it's a really something to help our community. Yeah, I'm so, so excited, so excited. So, mm. we'll Can have you the see my screen on right the screen? <laughs> Yes. So is this about ready? This is I ready. I know we're like whipping this up yeah. really quick here. And uh, we have here the ravioli. It's Wow, a, it looks awesome. It smells even. It tastes even wonderful. Nice. And again, November This is something 19. that you might be fig um, preparing at the Chef Fest then? Absolutely, yeah. an Italian station. November 19, mm, coming so over an Envision Center for Chef Fest. We wait all you. All right, Angelo, Chef Angelo, great you to have you with can us. Can I say this? You're so beautiful. <laughs> we'll have him up every month here. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us. We hope you join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then everyone.